When we talk about a nuclear event, what we mean is that a nuclear weapon has been tested. We don't see any reason whatsoever that there should be any weapons tests at all. So a nuclear event is not something we condone. I have a rather strange job uh, in that I'm the Chief Scientific Advisor for the UK's Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So that's the people in the UK that look outwards. Uh, in the US that would be called the State Department, for example. Now, as a scientist in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, I'm interested to ensure that diplomatic processes are underpinned, they have evidence-based, scientific evidence-based to them. In respect to the CTBTO, that means that I want to ensure that our government's relationship with CTBTO is founded on an understanding of the science and technology, not just as it exists today, but as it will exist in the future. We all bleed red. We're all in this together. We all come from the same human stock. We all have the same anxieties. And if I had my way, we'd all be scientists. This is a technical conference, which means a lot of scientists are here trying to discuss their work. But there are also a lot of policy people here as well. So it's very important that those scientists translate their scientific ideas into context that matters to policy people. The other thing is that when we look for a nuclear explosion, then we are going to use a range of different types of scientific techniques. So there are numbers of technical scientific communities represented here. And one of the really important things is for those communities to talk to each other and find synergies, find ways in which they can learn to work together and be more than the sum of their parts. We have seismologists, people who are looking for vibration in the Earth's crust. We have hydrodynamicists, people who are looking for waves occurring and propagating through the ocean. Now, seismologists are interested in things like volcanoes. They're interested in earthquakes in particular. Hydrodynamicists are looking at the way waves propagate in the ocean. That can even mean whale song. So you can see these are very different disciplines, and yet they're going to come together in order to allow us to do our job, which is to detect nuclear weapons tests. We've talked about waves propagating the Earth's crust. We've talked about them in the ocean. But there is another aspect of the work that is quite different. When there is a nuclear explosion, the uranium atoms are transformed into other fission products. These are new nuclei that weren't there before. And a really important one is a rare gas called xenon. If you look at the isotopes of xenon, the particular type of xenon nucleus, you can tell whether or not there was an explosion or whether or not that xenon was created in an industrial process. It turns out we do produce quite a lot of xenon when we make radioisotopes for pharmaceuticals. So trying to tell the difference between the different sorts of xenon is really very important. Another technology aspect that CTBTO has a very, very definite interest in. The scientists develop the structures which you can use to determine whether or not there was a test. But you need policymakers to take that basic knowledge, to take that understanding and turn it into policy and to also persuade governments throughout the world to also have the same sort of rigorous determination uh, with respect to their domestic agenda. Of course, the UK would really like to see the treaty enforced. We're not there yet, and it's probably going to take a considerable amount of time before it is. But that doesn't mean that the organisation doesn't play an extremely important role, and we really support all the aims that the organisation has. The development of the science, the development of the processes and protocols, extraordinarily important. The way that people now are trained so that we can deploy teams in the event of a suspect event. These things are extraordinarily valuable. The UK supports them very strongly. One of the challenges to getting the whole treaty ratified is to ensure that the public understands the importance. It's really crucial that both policymakers and scientists spend time talking to the public, explaining the technical issues, explaining the policy implications, so that the general public become convinced that this is a good idea, and essentially in the end it becomes a vote winner.
It's really important that we ratify the treaty because if we have a ratified treaty, if a state is able to carry out a test, it will feel the full force of an international treaty coming down on it. You know, when we look back years ago, people were very concerned about these sorts of weapons, but that's really fallen off the agenda with the end of the Cold War, except that technologically it hasn't gone away, and we need to make sure that we have the right tools to address this issue. It is current, and it's going to be important going into the future as well. I was born in 1961. That was the year of the Cuban Missile Crisis. At that point, things looked very bleak indeed. Since then, we've come a long way. But we've got a treaty here that we haven't ratified. It really is time for us to get on and ratify it, make progress, and eliminate aspects of this issue forever.